Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas and I'm going to be talking to you today about recycling this stuff. Rechargeable cordless drills and hard drives. We're going to start with the rechargeable drill. If you own one of these, you probably know that when the battery dies, there's really no sense in replacing it because you can almost buy an entire drill with multiple batteries for the same cost as replacing the battery on one of these. So what do you do with them? Most people either throw them away or try to get rid of them at yard sales. I picked this one up for 50 cents at a yard sale and I picked these up for a quarter a piece off of eBay plus shipping which came to like about seven dollars a piece but the point is inside of one of these there's some very interesting things that you can use for your green project. All drills usually have three or four screws that hold the casing together. These are usually Phillips head and you can remove them pretty easily. Inside of each drill is one of these, something that looks like this, on top of other switches and stuff like that. You end up with a 12 volt or 14.4 volt, depending on what kind you get, permanent magnet motor. Also, a planetary gear system with a chuck on the front. The reason that we like these is because this is basically a 12 volt generator. If you've ever purchased one off of eBay for 19 or $20 plus shipping, you end up with something like this. The problem with these is that you have to spin them at a very high RPM to get a usable current. This is where this comes in. This contains a planetary gear system. What it's designed to do is take this motor that usually spins anywhere from 5,000 to 15,000 RPMs and convert it down to something usable in a drill in the area of two to 400 RPMs. It wouldn't do you much good to have a drill that spins at 15,000 RPMs at low voltage. You wouldn't be able to effectively remove a screw or do just about anything with it. So they add this gear system. Now what we use the gear system for is the exact opposite of what the drill companies use it for. If you notice when I spin this, it's going to make like this really winding sound. That sound is this gear ratio working to spin this motor very fast. With each revolution I put on this, this motor is spinning 20 to 40 times faster than when I'm spinning it here. This creates a usable voltage on this end. We're going to hook it up to a voltage meter and show you what I'm talking about. Every time I spin this, you're going to notice the voltage creates a reading. If you're somebody like me who sees stuff on YouTube where somebody hooks their device up to a generator, spins it and creates voltage and registers it with one of these, you're probably not too impressed because you're going to think, well, how does that handle a load? And that's a great question that I couldn't agree with you more on. Simply hooking up a generator to one of these and spinning it does create voltage but the second that you hook any device that ha carries any type of load the voltage is going to drop significantly so what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to this 12 volt fan that I have right here and we're going to see how it works we're going to start by hooking the leads to the fan and then attaching them to our motor Now, if everything works well, these should, this should respond to what I do. You can see as I turn it, the electrical current is actually driving this fan. If I go the other direction, you can see it go the other direction. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rechargeable drill that still works, and I'm going to slide the chucks together. We're going to cheat a little bit and use this as our drive source. So you're not really accomplishing anything by doing this, but it does illustrate the principle pretty well. Now if I reverse it, the fan goes the opposite direction. Now, if we recreate the current by adding a drive mechanism that spins a lot faster than what I can do by hand, we're going to check the voltage on that. So you can see that that works pretty well for what we're doing. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to this larger motor recycled from a pump. We're going to hook the leads up to it and see 
how well we can do this just by hand. Okay, it's all hooked up and ready to go. And you can see that just by me simply turning it does a pretty nice job. Now I must say that this motor makes it much harder to turn this. That is the equivalent of what a load would be. As this motor's accomplishing a task driving this, it creates a load. Now I'm going to simulate what a short would be like just to show you how much strain it can put on whatever you're spinning your motor with. I'm going to take the two leads and attach them together. And now when I spin this, this becomes virtually very difficult. That is a maximum load right there. So that is why a lot of people who question whether something can carry a load, that explains it. Now if I undo these, spins a lot freely. It stopped the second these touch together. Move them apart, touch them together, and it's hard again. The other valuable feature in these is this chuck. It can be tightened down to just about any shaft that you have for your project, and it makes for very quick change outs. We're going to move on to the hard drive now.